At the very beginning of his main work, Burkhard Heim asked himself the question, what is the main common physical phenomenon that connects all physical phenomena in the world? This question forms the introduction to this main work of him, Elementary Structures of Matter. In this video, I want to give you this introduction as a prequel for diving in earnest into his theory. Hello and welcome to Six Dimensions in Color. My name is Hannes Schmidt and I explain to you Borkheim's worldview in understandable language and with clear examples. I'm talking today about two books which have only ever been published in German language. Few German physicists have read them in, in their entirety. Many have given up after one or two chapters and so did I at the very beginning. The main reason why they have never been translated into English and no one have ever, has ever made an effort for that is, didactically, they are simply awful, honestly. At the time when Heim wanted to publish those books, no scientific publishing house was interested because they are simply too vast and the theory had not been peer-reviewed. Therefore, he resorted to a publisher which he knew personally and with whom he had, published, he had done publications in the past. But this, that publishing house was specialized on parapsychology and theology. I think that should be forgiven today. Anyway, there were some improvements in the second and third edition. If you should wish to read the original books all the same in German language, they are nowadays public domain. The said publishing house has gone out of business and they have made all of Heim's publications that they, have, that they had published um, available as PDF downloads. I'm putting the link into the video description. If you do so, you will find narrow lines, formulas squeezed into the text mostly, no nice character setting and no numbered lines like you're used from modern textbooks. That's also something that needs to be forgiven. It's mainly due, it was mainly due to Heim's bad eyesight. He could write nothing himself. He dictated those books to his wife who had no scientific background and then he could, not, he could not review them himself. Anyway, despite my own initial difficulties with his theories and his publications, I have, over the years, I have read into them again and again. I learned of different angles, talked to, talked to people who knew him personally and who had some idea about it. Uh, I'm in no case finished yet with understanding everything. But those findings I had over the years I wish to convey to you so that you may have an easier time. If you like my channel and want to see more English videos about Heim's work, feel free to share your thoughts about how to, how to spread Heim's thoughts even further. But most importantly, like, share, subscribe. Talk to your teachers, your professors, your colleagues, but most importantly, ask questions and also correct me if you think it's necessary. If you want to go down this road with me, you will have an easier time if you have some knowledge already in the fields of special and general relativity, the related methods of tensor calculus, and some functional analysis. Don't be intimidated. Everything can be learned. No one knew these things in the cradle, not even Burkhard Heim. So much for the preface. Elementary structures of matter. Heim was concerned with a unified description of the world, and he found, before I can describe the world in its entirety, I must first have, I must first have a complete description of physics. And for this, he said, I must first describe the forces of nature in a unified way, and this must ultimately lead to a unified description of the masses of the elementary particles. Now he asked himself, how do I start? Others have tried their approaches, of course, like Einstein or Kaluza. But general relativity describes gravitation and the macrocosmos, and no more. Quantum theory describes the behavior of the very small particles and the microcosmos, but no more. No unification has ever worked till this day. So Heim had to find an approach from the beginning. He could build on nothing. And he retracted to the basic observations and experience that on which we can base any physical description of the world. And he found four basic assumptions or basic statements, which he stated in the beginning of his first book, and those are 
First, there are principles of conservation in nature, like the conservation of energy, of momentum, of electrical charge, formulated, for example, in the first law of thermodynamics. Second, there are extremal principles in nature, as the maximization of entropy in all physical processes, or that, that uh, movement always takes place on geodesic lines, so straight lines in relation to the space they are, they are embedded in, and not in serpentines. These things can be described by variational calculus. Third, matter and energy appear quantized. There are smallest energetic effects, like Planck's quantum of action, or the elementary masses. And fourth, there are physical interaction forces which can be described by fields. These are the electrical field, the gravitational field, and the nuclear force or field. Whereby he, by nuclear force, he meant the weak nuclear force. At the time he, he, he conceived these ideas, the strong nuclear force was not yet postulated. And in the end, the strong nuclear force in Heim's model is not a force at all, it's something geometrical. So he doesn't need the, he doesn't need the gluons, which supposedly connects the quarks. So his theory supersedes the concept of strong nuclear force. Then there is, of course, on top of that, the principle of relativity, which means everywhere in the universe, the laws of nature must be the same, no matter how fast an observer is moving. That was the basis of Einstein's theories. And means nothing else that, that the laws of physics must remain the same under coordinate transformations. Now, however, it is the matter of finding a unified approach for a unified description of all these phenomena that can be observed in the world. If this is possible, then there must be a universal field tensor. This is something that time required at the very beginning and which he deducted in a, in a classical or semi-classical way, that is, without higher dimensions yet. In the coming video, we will first look into the properties of this universal field tensor and the properties of the space and the geometry in which it is embedded into. I'm trying to improve Heim's didactics here, but I must introduce two or three different threads of arguments which will come together at the end and make sense again in six dimensions and in color.